Discord. There we go. All right, welcome to our first WIA Zoom meeting. I'm Stephanie Hauser. Uh, hopefully, I know most of you. Please be patient. I'm the guinea pig here. I'm trying this out for the first time, so hopefully, uh, hopefully, it goes okay. We do have a limit of 50 attendees for this meeting. So for those that you that you talked to that were unable to get into the meeting live, you can access this link on the volleyball page later today. So if you have coaches that you wanted to watch it, were unable, again, just have them go to the volleyball page. We'll have a link there. We'll leave it up there indefinitely. Also, feel free to share this link with any of your sporting goods apparel vendors. They may also find it helpful when it comes to the uh, New Jersey Roost for Volleyball. So why are we doing this this way? I've gotten so many questions from volleyball coaches and ADs with regard to the new solid jersey rule for 16 and also the expanded coaching contact rules for the summer. I've answered a lot of emails. I've sent clarifying emails, but I'm still getting a lot of questions. So I thought I'd try this format that allows for some interaction with, with, from all of you as well. A few meeting guidelines. First of all, all of you are muted. If you have a question, you should be able to click raise your hand and I'll see that and then I can unmute you to ask your question live. So we are covering two topics today. The first one is the new solid jersey rule. Second is the coaching contact rules. Feel free to leave the meeting at any time you choose. Again, it is being recorded, so if you have to step away for an appointment, you can come back to it later on the volleyball page, or again, just choose to leave when you feel like you've heard enough and it's answer your questions. All right, let's get started. First of all, the updated rule for the 2016 solid jersey rule referred to NFH rule um, 422 on page 17. Give me a second, I wanna show that on my screen to you so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm not seeing it here, you guys. I just shared my screen, why can't I see it? It's not working. Hold tight, hang in there. What's that? This one? No. Okay. You'll have to stop sharing the top. Okay, close that window. Which one? The manage participants you have up in the middle. Come over here, will you please? Of course. Hang in there, you guys. A little technical difficulty again. Remember, this is our first time. Yep. Okay. Click that. Do you have it open, what you want to share? Well, there it is, yeah. This? Yep. Okay. That should be on your screen now. Okay, I don't see it. Do you think they do? It's right here. Yeah, they, they, they see it. Okay. This. Hopefully you guys are seeing what I'm talking about right now. So again, this is the new rule, and um, the note down here is the part that I want to refer you to because this is a new part that's throwing everybody off. So beginning July 1st, 2016, the libero shall wear a uniform top that is immediately recognized from all angles as being in clear contrast to and distinct from the other members of the team. Fine, that part seems to be not a problem. Here's the part that has been confusing. Libero and or his or her teammates shall wear a solid colored uniform top. The and or part is the part that seems to be throwing everybody off. I want to share another slide with you with some photos that will help you better understand the and or because it made a lot of sense to me once I called National Federation. Now I want to share a different picture. It's on a desktop. On a desktop. Well, you can just share your desktop then and launch it. Okay, but it's not sharing my desktop. Um, go to stop share. Okay. Um, click on your share screen. And if you just pick desktop. Yep, I did. Okay. Um, yep, share Real quick. Our share screen. Now go ahead and just launch it. They see what you're, what you're doing. But where is it? It's not there. Here we go. Okay, there we go. So this is the picture I was trying to get to 
Um, so here is the and or part. Picture number one. Picture number one shows an example where your libero is wearing your solid colored jersey. This does meet the rules of the solid jersey. The teammates' jerseys are something else, like let's say they're tie-dye or something. So that would be an or. Libero's in solid, teammates or not, are not. Slide number two is another or. Your libero is in something that's not solid, let's say it's tie-dye or stripes, and the team is in jerseys that are solid color. And then finally, here's the picture. The last one is the and. You've got your libero and your team in solid jersey. Now you have to go refer to the contrasting piece, which is the top of that other rule. So hopefully those three slides will help you. We've had a lot of ADs that have been panicked. In fact, let me bring that back up for a second. A lot of ADs have been panicked because they send me pictures and they're Current jersey does not mean the solid color jersey rule. I tell them don't panic, it's okay. You don't have to run out and buy all new jerseys for your whole team. Just run out and buy a new jersey for your libero and then you'd be just like compliant slide number one. The rest of your team has non-solid jerseys and your libero has a solid jersey. So again, don't panic. You don't have to run out and buy new jerseys. Probably would just need to buy a new jersey for your libero. Any questions on that piece, the solid jersey? Because I'm going to change over to the contact rules unless we've got questions about solid jersey. Oh, I see everyone, if they have a question. Anybody with a question, let me know. Hey, Stephanie. Oop, I heard someone. Stephanie, can you hear me? Yes, who is talking? Uh, J.C. Bruins, uh, head coach of Menominee Falls High School. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. So the, the question I have is then, so a non-compliant one would be uh, two of those blended jerseys, if you will, but different colors. Um, you know, like with stuff down the sleeves. Um, if, can you go back to that picture at all? Yep. Let me get back to there. Okay. There? So I'll use the I'll use the example in the compliant uh, the third picture over. Um, you know, if you look at the libero there, uh, with like the wolves down the sleeves and something like that. You know, we've got uh, something with with just a, a couple of blended colors down the sleeves. Um, it's it's very uh, minor. Um, if there's a completely opposite color than that, but also with the same blended down the sleeves, that can be considered non-compliant. Okay, I, I definitely see what you're asking. There probably is some confusion. So your your concern is if if this blending down the sleeve makes it a non-solid jersey, right? That's what you're asking. Yeah. Basically? Yeah. Okay, and that's that's a fair question, but it is allowed with with limitations. I'm going to go back to I want to go back to the National Federation. Um, Hang on, their actual rule itself. So if you look down in this box and you look at letter A, B, C, and down through the bottom, it does talk about that. Letter E, right here, a single school name, mascot, and or player's name may be placed on the body of the uniform top, which will not destroy, okay, hang on. Single mascot reference and or school name may be placed on the sleeve, not to exceed four by four or three by five. So as long as the sleeve fits those criteria, it is still fitting the solid colored jerseys. So that picture you thought is compliant because of that. Okay. Go, can you go back to the picture one last time? I don't want to keep this too much longer, but if you can okay. go back to the picture one last time, that would be great. Why we're doing this. Okay, go ahead. I'm waiting for it to pop up here. Okay. Do you see it or not? Not yet, no. Okay, hang on one second. I'll go to him. Where is it? Which one was he? Here? Okay, hang on one second. Just getting there. Hang on, I gotta, I gotta get to back to where you can see. So I wanna do sheer screen. Sorry, she wanted me from that one. 
But when you do one on you, just go to the person. Come on here. Yes. I'm here. stalled out here, you guys. I apologize. Stop share. We're going to try this again. I wanted to open it first. So I'll just close that. Open your document up. Is it is it running for you down there? No. Is it? There you go. Now, Can you see that now? I, Oops. Can you see it now? I hope. Oh, they're muted. No, just have a razor hand. Two, if those were our two contrasting, because we've got that blended stuff down in the bottom of their torsos, is that something that would be compliant as well? So, sorry, I missed the first part of your question, but you're, you're asking okay. about this part right here that I'm looking at, right? Yeah, so let's say that that's my libero jersey, the one that you're circling right now, yep. and that libero jersey is being used alongside the black ones in picture one. No, those would not be. They would because because neither one of them meets the solid the <laughs> solid definition. Then, so those would not be compliant. So if you have if you have this number one Apologies. with these this teammate right here, both yeah, non solid jersey. So that would not be compliant. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Yep. You bet. Any other questions? Otherwise, we'll move on to coaching contact. All right, let's go on to the next topic. Okay, at the, the April annual meeting, the membership voted to make changes in the unlimited non-school summertime contact coaching rules for volleyball, basketball, and hockey. I think it's caused some confusion among coaches and ADs. It was not intended to do that, so I'm going to hopefully help you out with that. So a lot of questions by coaches, I think they have misinterpreted in thinking that now they can coach club. The answer to that is yes and no. Again, hopefully we can clear it up for you here. My job's so easy. All right, today. Okay, this piece. Can you guys see my screen right now? Can you see the summertime unrestricted contact form? No. 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 See you. You see me. Oh, that's nice. Share screen. Why can't I share my screen? Choose what you want to share. Well, it's on Which the desktop. One? Okay, then just pick desktop. I did that. Okay, as long as that's up here. This is what sharing. it's not. What so I want to see this though. Whatever you're. Doing. It keeps giving me this, Eric. What's that? I don't want this. I want this. You guys are being super patient. You want to move that? The PowerPoint. Okay, uh, it must be. It's not there. Good, close, close. Quick PowerPoint. What am I clicking on? PowerPoint. Now what do I do? Share screen. Well, you don't have it open yet, so he's uh, gonna borrow your mouse. Yep. You guys, I got Eric here. He's a he's our IT guy, and he's trying to get this open for me again. Remember, I'm the guinea pig. We're living and learning. Okay, 
we go. Okay, now share your screen and you should be in better shape. All right, I hope you can now see this slide that I'm referring to. Somebody give me a thumbs up. Okay. Yep. So this is the this is the new language that's passed since April that has caused I think a lot of confusion. Just like always, you have you have your five unrestricted days that can continue throughout the summertime until the last last day of school to the start of school. Okay, so that's your five unrestricted days. That has not changed. That's that's you fill out the paperwork with your athletic director. You can coach your kids. What has been confusing to, um, to most, I think, is the new unlimited non-school coaching contact. So again, it's summertime. It is not during the school year. That's what's throwing club volleyball coaches for a loop. You can coach club volleyball as long as it's not during the school year. It has to be summertime. So my daughter played club volleyball. Let me walk you through for her. Her coaches would not, her high school coaches would not have been able to coach her through the months of January, February, March, April, May, and part of June until Spash dismissed for the summer. But if her high school coaches would have liked to jump on from that day forward, they could have followed through and been on her coaching staff until she went out to Reno in July for the national tournament. So again, I think coaches have misinterpreted thinking that now they can be a club volleyball coach. So the answer is no, not during the school year, but yes, they could during the summertime. Does that clear it up? And let me know if you have further questions about that. Anybody else questions on that one? Okay, I think I think we're good. That was the one I was like I said I'd gotten so many emails. Asking. Yeah, I have a question. Go ahead. From they hey, can how coach are you? club volleyball. They just can't coach their athletes in club volleyball during the school year. Correct. Right. That hasn't changed. They can coach club, just not their own athletes. That has not changed. Okay. Thanks. But again, I think what's going on is a, is a misinterpretation. Many think that the expanded rule does allow them to coach their own kids in club now. And again, the answer to that is no, not during the school year, but yes, in the summertime. Gotcha. Thank you. Yep. All right, that's all I had for today. I appreciate you joining me. Um, if Stephanie, there's other, I have one oh, yeah. question. Go ahead. Hey, Brian. Hey, uh, Brian Sharkey, uh, Indian Trail Boys Volleyball, also Badger Region program director for club yep. volleyball. The biggest question we get here in the Badger Region Volleyball Office this year uh, hasn't necessarily been about the rule that you just went over. It's been about uh, varsity coaches uh, coaching eighth graders, incoming yep. freshmen. Do you want to clarify that at all at this time? That rule hasn't changed. JV and varsity coaches are allowed to coach eighth grade kids up until the first day of ninth grade. Ninth grade coaches are not allowed. I will tell you that that is something that is currently being discussed to be looked at, possibly going to be brought up at the annual meeting this year for discussion, not a vote, and also at the area meetings next fall. I think it's time we revisit that rule to make sure that in this day and age it still holds true, but nothing has changed with that at this time. Still... JV and varsity coaches can coach eighth graders up until the first day of ninth grade. Ninth grade coaches cannot. And that still applies if a school doesn't have a freshman team because in the boys volleyball world, you got to figure 70% of the schools don't have freshman boys volleyball. I can't answer that with 100% certainty. That's something I'd have to ask Wade for clarification. That's a good question. Um, I, can, I can shoot out an email. Or actually, I think on this recording later, I can probably even edit it and add, add an answer to your question. But I do want to check with Wade on that. Okay. Sounds good. Right. Go ahead. Another question? Yes, I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, Willie Marilyn, head coach at Racine Case High School, girls volleyball. Hey, how are you? All right. How are you doing? Good. 
So two questions, one regarding the jerseys. Yes. Now, if I put letters on the sleeve, they all have to be the same color, correct? Uh, let's see here. Single. It does not specify that, but I would assume so. I can double check. If you want to send me that email, I'll get back to you on that. But I think you're probably right. Okay, and then as far as a contact goes in the summer after the last day of school, yep. does it need to be through a third party? Correct. Unless it's one of your five, your five unrestricted days, then it does not. But if it okay. yes, has to be um, USA Volleyball, it has to be you know uh, uh, through a booster, it could be through a booster club or a camp or something. Yes, absolutely okay. through a third party. You're exactly right. All right. Um, let's go back to the, the question um, regarding if there is no ninth grade team. I've got Wade Lebecki here with me now. So if you do not have a ninth grade team, the question, Wade, is is your J, are your JV and varsity coaches still allowed to have contact with eighth graders? Yes. Okay. So to answer your question, Brian, it makes no difference whether there is a ninth grade team at the school or not. Sounds good. Thanks, Wade. Any, anybody else? I got a question over here. Okay. Um, can, can, you, can you see me? Yep. I'm Kendra Paco. I'm the head coach at Regis in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. And um, some of our coaches in the area, we have a summer league um, that we play uh, at Altoona High School. And my biggest question is, um, are we allowed to coach those teams if our booster club or someone else runs a tryout for them to make a varsity or JV level team. Are we allowed to attend those games and coach those games throughout the summer? Okay, I think you've got a few questions going on there. Um, let me just share one document with you. This is a document I hope you guys can see right now. Can you confirm, Kendra, that you can see this summer coaching contact? Yep. Okay. This is a document that's found on the WAA um, under schools, under eligibility and forms, and on the right-hand side, it's a new document. There's two documents labeled new, and I think this will help answer some of the questions that you have. The two different kinds of contact are what we just talked about, summer coaching contact, unrestricted school contact, which is your five days, and then summer coaching contact down below, which is your unlimited non-school. So you need to look at these parameters and make sure that it fits. If it fits these parameters with regard to equipment, funding, school transportation, school facilities, then your answer is yes, you could. If it doesn't fit those criteria, then no, you can't. Okay. So like if they don't use any of the Regis equipment, we don't hold the games here, we don't pay for them to play in the league and I don't organize the team, I can coach it. I'm going to let Wade Lebecki chime in on this one. Well, the key is that it's non-school. Now, if it's non-school and your booster club is running the team and paying for the resources, you can rent the gym during the summertime. They can rent the gym anytime during the year. They can rent the equipment. So if the, if the, High school, Regis High School says you can rent the gym for 50 bucks. You can set up the net for another 10 and you can use our volleyballs. You can do all of that via the booster club. The key is from the last day of school to the first day of school. And you can coach them after the last or during the last day of school. So you can do that uh, and it's possible. Now, if your tryouts are before the last day of school, then your booster club would have to conduct the tryouts. You cannot be involved until the last day of school. Okay. So again, this document is under schools and eligibility. And then um, over on the right-hand side, there's two new documents. And this one is excellent. I think if you really re reference these for your five days here, and then your unlimited non-school contact here to make sure that your parameters fall within then you probably have the answer to your question but don't ever hesitate to have um, your AD or yourself contact our office just to make sure the other document I want to share with you before I take one more question um, is got one got one more here I think we've now figured out how to share our screen a little screen a little more 
efficiently. This one is also on there. It's another new document. It's just frequently asked questions. So some of these apply specifically to volleyball, some not, but, but the answer is still consistent. So please review that one as well. And I think that will clear up some of the questions you may have also about summer contact. Any, anybody else have any questions? All right, we're gonna sign off. And again, please let people know that the recorded version will be available on the volleyball page. Uh, I would appreciate, um, other than the technical difficulties, which now I think we've got figured out, I'd appreciate feedback, both thumbs up, thumbs down on what we could do better for the next time we do something like this. Thanks for participating, everybody. It's been awesome. Take care and have a great day.